Computer games are awesome, I think we can all agree on that, but lots of them need a big beefy gaming PC to run. Does that mean that you can't be a PC gamer if you don't have an expensive monster gaming PC? Well, no, don't be stupid, of course not, because for every GPU melting AAA game that comes along, there are scads of low spec and indie games that are just as good if not better than the big boys. And the best part is that they'll run on any computer. <laughs> what do you think I'm lying? Well, shut up. Any old laptop or cheap mini PC will get the job done for these sorts of games, so you have no excuse not to play the heck out of them. I'm TechDweeb and today I'm going to show you some of my favorite low spec PC games that you might not have heard about. That's right, this is a hidden gems video. I've gathered five to show you. Five of my all time favorite low spec PC games that will literally run on a potato. So grab your old laptop or your dead grandma's Facebook computer or a cheap mini PC and let's look at some low spec PC hidden gems. Right. Now, starting off with what is probably the most low spec of all the games on this low spec games list, this little gem is called Teleglitch Die More Edition, as, a, as opposed to the Die in Normal Amount Edition. It's a survival horror roguelike game from a top-down perspective. Picture Resident Evil as a twin-stick shooter, but with Atari graphics. It's almost 3D, but it's super low fidelity, and it has this style to it that I just love. <laughs> like, nostalgic, but also modern at the same time. Lots of games try to pull this off, but not many of them get it right. So even though this is super low resolution and all the sprites are super basic, it's just it's pixel perfect, in my opinion. You can play with a mouse and keyboard or a controller and it works equally well in both control configurations. The game is super creepy. I know it's just low resolution pixel sprite based art, but it's a genuinely unsettling story and the weird sounds and strange zombie alien enemies just uh, creeps me right out, man. You go through the levels looking for items and upgrades. Uh, resources are, are super scarce and there's lots of luck involved. Runs usually end with you getting brutally torn apart, but if you can make it far enough, there's save points at every third level. So it's just a matter of doing run after run until you somehow, against the odds, make it safely to the checkpoints. The gunplay and action are tight though. It's, it's one of those hard but fair systems that gets better the better you are at it. It's just a hardcore action roguelike and if what you see appeals to you then you'll probably love it and the story and the creepy setting will be a nice bonus because the game is more than the action and the visuals. It's a, it's a complete horror experience. Just play at your own risk and don't blame me if you have pixely nightmares after playing this one. In my Discord server, which you should totally join, we do a question of the day there. And one day I asked what everyone's favorite Metroidvania game was. I had to think long and hard about the question and eventually I settled on this one, Axiom Verge. I I'm not a huge Metroidvania guy. I'm not a connoisseur of the genre. There have been lots that I like, but I'm not invested in the general category as a whole. But this game pulled me in, not because it's just a Metroidvania, but because of the art and the theme and the setting. The art and visual style makes this look like it's from the NES era. The attention to detail while at the same time keeping within the limitations of the sprite and tile resolution is seriously impressive. You guys know I'm a sucker for good pixel art and this game does a lot with very little. The gameplay is pretty simple to be honest. You're a scientist and you get caught up in an accident and then you find yourself in an alien world and there's some question about whether this is Earth in the future or an alien planet or even some weird computer dimension. You go through the game and you get upgrades for your weapon and find new weapons and learn new abilities called glitches that let you progress in typical Metroidvania style. Uh, apparently this is made by one guy. <laughs> Man, what a freaking amazing accomplishment that one person made this entire gem of a game. There's a sequel to this that came out last year that I haven't tried yet, but I will. What I liked about this one, the original, is that the art and graphics look like an original NES game, and the sequel doesn't quite capture that matter. I still haven't beaten the original though, so I'll stick with this until I do. Oh, and the music is freaking amazing. <laughs> Just listen to this. Pop. 
post void, ladies and gentlemen. It calls itself a hypnotic scramble of early first person shooter design, and, and that's bang on. This game is freaking nuts. Picture Hotline Miami with the 1980s Neon City vibe, the crunchy ultraviolence, but this time it's a retro first person shooter. This game is its like a boomer shooter fever dream. I am nuts about this game. Literally, it makes me feel like I'm on drugs or something. Like a drug-induced nightmare world and the only way out is through. There is a deranged beauty to the experience. With a kind of Miami pulp dark comic colors and characters, but it's done in an engine that makes it look like it's barely more advanced than Doom or Duke 3D. I love games that immerse me and bring me into another world, and this world is so strange and foreign to me that I actually want to actively escape it. And that's good, because that's your goal. Each level has an exit that you need to find, and your health, which is this goo that's kept in a jar that you hold, it's slowly leaking out. And as the last drops drain, you get a three second countdown, but if you kill someone, it refills your jar a little bit. So you're trying to rush to the exit and move from kill to kill to keep that jar topped up. When you reach the exit, you're given a choice of three upgrades, which can do things like extend your clip, give you a compass that points to the exit, give you an Uzi instead of a handgun, make your bullets bounce, so you get tougher and tougher as the game goes on. And each level gets harder and harder, giving you new types of enemies to deal with and changing up the level geography. The gameplay isn't just fast paced. <laughs> it's so damn fast that the world just blurs by you as you sprint around and blast enemies apart as you slide past them and through them, flying down corridors and whipping around corners and you bust into a new place and you have to take in the scene in like 0.2 seconds to decide which monstrosity has first priority to blast with your bad guy blaster. And then you'll choose wrong and some psycho monster rips your face off and you'll try again and again, and you'll die a hundred times, but you'll get a little better each time, and that's what you'll keep doing, because there's no escape from the void. Those who know me well know that I'm a sucker for shoot them up games. One of the earliest that was released on the PC that I fell in love with is this one, Jamestown Legend of the Lost Colony. It's based on a true story. It takes place on Mars in a steampunk 17th century where there's a British colony contested by the Spanish and the indigenous Martians. Th that really happened, right? On the surface, it's a pretty standard shoot them up game. You got your four different ships, each with their primary and secondary attack. And then there's this vaunt mode, which you can power up by collecting gold, and then you can engage it to become stronger for a period of time. You can play it single player or multiplayer, obviously. It starts out deceptively easy, but the difficulty ramps up quickly. There are five levels in the game and a few bonus ones after, but each one is meticulously designed with a ton of small details. And not that you'll be able to truly appreciate them while you're dodging 5,000 bullets at once. Like lots of games on this list, the art is freaking amazing. That's what really sets this apart from earlier shoot them up games and it makes it feel like a modern evolution of the genre. I guess I'd call the art style maybe 16 bit or 32 bit, hard to say, but as you can see, it's a beaut. Spoiler alert, most of the games on this list will have good art. I generally don't play games that don't look amazing. It's just a great shoot them up game, a modern throwback to the classic arcade shoot them up games that we all love. And the fact that it covers the real true history of the British and Spanish conflict when they colonized Mars in the 17th century means that you'll learn something at the same time. And finally, we have this game. I've shown this game many times in my videos, mostly because when I'm testing PCs and handhelds, this is always the first game that I install because it's a small download. It's quick to play because each level only takes a few minutes and I also love it. And every time that I show it but forget to put the game name on the screen, I have tons of people asking me what the game is. So I'll tell you all about it now. It's Bot Vice. This is another game that feels like a retro game from like the Super Nintendo or maybe Sega 32X. It's a true throwback to the old school arcade shooters with super tight gameplay and badass art and sounds that suck you in and really give you that just one more level hook that makes it hard to put down. 
There's actually a story here. <laughs> the game takes place in what I'm gonna say is basically Night City, you know, like a cyberpunk world, but a, like a cartoony version of that. You play as Aaron Saver, who is a renegade cop carrying out her personal vendetta against the criminal wild bots. It's a cute, simple story. Not gonna win any awards, but I like that it's there. The gameplay is freaking tight as heck. You'll be shooting, dodging, collecting weapons, switching weapons, locking on to specific enemies to target, taking cover behind the barricades. By default, you'll be shooting straight up, but there's also a lock on button that'll lock onto the nearest enemy. Sometimes there's lots of enemies on the screen, so getting the lock on to the enemy that you want to shoot is a game in itself. At several points through the levels, a helpful little robot will drop health and weapons when you shoot them. So you get machine guns, spread fire gun, grenade launcher, rocket launcher, or blowtorch. There's, each level is different. There's different environmental stuff, but it's always a matter of defeating the predefined enemy roster to get to the boss, and then the boss will come out. And oh, and here's another unique thing about this game. Each level has a unique and challenging boss. It's just a freaking hoot. It really feels like an old game, but with that modern style and tight game design and super polished and colorful pixel art and a catchy 90s synth rock soundtrack. I can't say enough good stuff about this game. It's it's one of my favorites, and I totally don't have a crush on Erin with her cute purple hair. Definitely not. And that brings us to the end. I had so many games that I wanted to include, but I got to keep the videos short. I couldn't show them all. So you can definitely expect several videos in this low spec PC hidden gem series because I've barely scratched the surface of the stuff that I want to show you. So get subscribed if you haven't yet, so you don't miss the next one. If you are looking for a mini PC to play these on, I'll have some links to a few that I recommend in the description below. Oh, also check out my recent video where I show you how to install SteamOS on a mini PC to turn it into a home console. <laughs> That's a perfect setup for these sorts of low spec indie games. There's a link to that video on the screen right now and down in the description below and you can go watch it now because we're done. I'm TechTweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye.